a schoolboy growing up in Edinburgh, I delivered milk here, fed his college. This imposing French chateau is the school where the author Ian Fleming had a certain James Bond expelled from. A particular old school tie, but it was never my problem. I left school at 13. I've filmed in most of the world's great cities, which makes coming home here all the better. To me, Edinburgh seems to have been built as a film set. Take this particular backdrop from ancient Greece. Edinburgh's own Parthenon, the Athens of the North. But in Edinburgh, the classic and the romantic are never far apart. Like this classical temple in memory of that most romantic poet of the Doric, Robert Burns. It's a city where these two historical forces seem to fuse into one. Edinburgh's history is Scotland's history. At Holyrood, once the home of Scottish kings and Mary Queen of Scots, it's part of Europe's history too. Under this heraldic ceiling within the old palace of Holyrood House, pivoted Queen Mary's tempestuous life. Here, Darnley, her brutal husband, dragged the court musician, David Rizzio, to his death before he too was murdered. And in her turn, the Queen of Scots was doomed. Mary would only have recognized this side of her palace. A century and a half later, the same Gothic style was used to create classic symmetry. After Scotland's union with England, Charles II consolidated his United Kingdom by panelling this long gallery with portraits of Scotland's ancient kings by the yard. But there was a snag. Nobody knew what any of them looked like. The Dutch painter, Jacobus de Wet, who landed the job, had very little to go on. So he just painted the face he knew best, his own. Mm -hmm. 